Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning back in. Today we're going to talk about tracking stars with the Star, star Tracker. Alright, so first thing we need is our handy dandy tripod. And this thing has to be perfectly level for this tracker to work efficiently. The closer to level you get your tripod to start with, the better off you are. So let's get this thing set up. Alright, once you have your tripod set up and leveled out, we're going to add our first piece of equipment, which is an EQ mount or latitude mount bracket. You can even call it an equatorial wedge. Um, this is important to get the proper alignment to pull her north. Um, this one here is by Skywatcher. It's nice heavy duty, super fine adjustments on it to get your polar alignment perfect. Has a normal wedge mount for scope. Um, it's the same mount that the Skywatcher Star Adventure will slide right in here and mount up perfect. When we mount this, we want to get it facing relatively close to the North Star Polaris. It'll help with making the adjustments later quite easy. So we'll just install this on. It does have a bubble level on it. So you can double check to make sure everything is still level. And we get that facing north. That's our first step to getting ready for this. Our next step is actually installing the tracker. This is the Star Adventure by Skywatcher. It's pretty heavy duty, all metal, except for the dust shields or plastic. Basically just cover the scopes and the battery cap and the other cap for the scope or plastic. Everything else is metal. And again, nice big knobs, easy to control. This has several tracking modes on here. The Star Tracker, the solar tracker and the lunar tracker. And then we have half speed, two times speed, six times speed, and 12 times speed. So we could actually use this for other things like making star trails faster. Or we could set it up vertically with the camera on here and we could do a, a motion lapse with it as well. All right, so we'll get this mounted in here. This thing can run on four AA batteries or there's a, I always forget to get these screwed up. I believe this is a micro USB, the old small one, um, five volt input. So you can run it off of a USB battery pack or you can plug it into an adapter into an extension cord to power it instead of running off of the batteries as well. So now that we're all lined up, we need to pull our liner scope. So we're gonna remove our caps from our scope. We're going to use an application on our cell phone called the PS Align, which is a polar scope alignment app. To do that, we'll just open the app up and it'll tell us our latitude that we're currently at. And with that, there's a scale on here. We can adjust this so we're roughly close to our current latitude for finding Polaris. Once we have that close and we looked on our app and we found where Polaris is, we'll take our polar scope illuminator and install it so we can see that same graph that's in the, on the app in our scope and we can use our latitude adjustment and our azimuth adjustment screws here to fine tune the scope to get Polaris right where it needs to be to be properly polar aligned. And once we have that all set, we are done with our scope. We can take off our illuminator and we can reinstall the caps. Keeps the dust and junk off. One important thing is once you have your tripod leveled, not to move it. Now that our scope is aligned, no other adjustments to the scope will be made. Everything will be made with this clutch and a declination bracket or a ball mount, depending on which way you hook your camera up. I use the optional bracket and counterweight because I use a du dual battery battery grip. The camera's a little heavier, so it just, just helps balance everything, take less strain on the, the motor inside here. So we'll quick install this on. 
just slides in our wedge. Now with this clutch, this is our right ascension axis. This is how the stars move across the sky. And here is our declination so we can actually find our stars. So you can mount your camera directly onto here or you can have the option to mount a ball joint directly on. All right, so now with our ball joint mounted, we can mount our camera and our mount, and we can balance our counterbalance. So we take stress off the motor and everything works. It's just like balancing a telescope. Put our camera on, loosen our clutch, turn it side to side, and we wanna get it to the point where it doesn't wanna drop either way. So we'll just loosen our weight out, move it out a little bit, recheck our balance. As you can see, we need to go a little bit further, move it out a little bit more. Now we have a good balance. So now all that's left is to focus our camera, which we talked about in the last video. Line up our subject. Turn our unit on. And now we're ready to attract the stars. Now we can take longer exposures than just the standard using the 500 rule. We can go longer. This does have a built-in intervalometer, but it is set for when you're doing stars to 100 seconds. If you have this thing aligned really well, you can take even longer exposures if you use an external intervalometer which is what I prefer to do. So now we'll take a look at some, compare some pictures of the standard that we did last time in the last video, compare them to now how they look when we track the stars, still with a single exposure. And then our next video, we'll talk about using a star stacking application to stack multiple exposures All right, and there you have it. There's an example of a simple five second exposure on a steady mount as opposed to using the Skywatcher Sky Tracker and getting a three minute exposure. So the difference you can see is quite a bit. Um, in the next video, we'll go over what to do with multiple exposures and how you stack them and what light frames and dark frames and bias frames are. And so I hope you liked and subscribed and come back for the next episode. Thanks.